if you are referring to the present state of affairs in Kerala, I'm afraid I won't be able to identify myself with any of them. The brands which are taken up by the organizations are such that no youth with a modern understanding of the happenings around the world will be able to identify himself. I think they should stop right now because the organizations are fighting like wolves on the open street and the common man is suffering like a sheep. They should stop all kinds of fighting right now. A major part of uh, religious organizations in Kerala Islam today is focused on how to crush the other organization. They are not connected uh, with the larger community and the community's interests are at stake. They are only focused on how to build them, their network. Uh, they are well funded and they are well organized yet they are not concerned with the problems of the community at large. Today's religious activism of these organizations in Kerala Islam is focused probably on a few on a few areas. The first one, of course, they focus on the uh, event management. They conduct huge conferences, inviting guests from sometimes abroad uh, India, only to highlight their organizational strength. The second one is fund uh, fundraising campaigns. They go to the op uh, out to the uh, community. Uh, they meet the business leaders, uh, they meet the political leaders uh, and raise funds so much that uh, millions are sometimes spent uh, on their uh, events and organizational activities. The third one is uh, media activism, but the, the focus of the media activism is only on personal slandering or uh, how to criticize the other organizations. They are not picking up the larger issues of the community, uh, making awareness of these uh, social issues. There is so much of social issues including uh, alcoholism which is uh, growing very crucially in the Muslim community in Kerala, but none of these organizations are focusing on these social evils or uh, how to eliminate uh, these evils from the society. Uh, the other thing they do is the flexing their uh, organizational muscles, the numbers during the times uh, of elections. In the battle of ballots, what they do is they uh, approach politicians or politicians approach them and uh, these uh, organizations gave guarantees of so much votes for the political parties, which is not supposed to be the realm of these organizations. In Kerala Islam, the organizers have to uh, focus on raising the spiritual awareness among people. Their job is not to intervene in politics or to uh, challenge other political parties or threaten them or challenge them uh, with the, uh, the ballot power. And then of course, is they also run uh, uh, educational institutions, but these institutions I say are educational factories. There is no evaluation of the products from these organizations. After they graduate, there is no self evaluation, there is no performance evaluation, there is no quality check on the uh, system, the education system prevailing in these factories. I feel Kerala Islam is living in a very dangerous comfort zone. Despite the Sanjari's old traditions, which is very superb, very unique to Kerala Islam. Uh, it has not been able to produce notable figures who are recognized at a global level in the world of Islam. I am referring to those names which we find from the cradles of Muslim civilization like um, Iraq, like Syria, uh, Turkey, uh, the Persian. Kerala has not been able to carve a distinct position for itself in the world of Islamic arts. 
despite claimed to have begun right during the prophetic era. If you say that is the case of past, the present is not encouraging either because despite a lineup of incredible Islamic learning centers in Kerala Islam, we do not have a global icon or spokesman to showcase before the international community. Yes, this is a voice, the international voice of Kerala Islam. And I personally feel that the religious organizations, the infighting between the organizations has played a major role in not being able to contribute a powerful voice, a powerful figure from the Kerala Islam. However, if my observations of social media for the past 4 to 5 years are correct, then I say the Kerala Muslim youths are heavily looking up to international uh, Muslim scholars and orators like Hamza Yusuf and Tariq Ramadan for the spiritual kick. Because Kerala Islam has not been able to produce a figure so powerful enough to influence the present youth. These uh, religious outfits have not been able to produce a panacea for the paranoia surrounding the community at large. There have been so many issues where uh, youths have looked up to somebody for a proper uh, interpretation of the events happening. But sadly, Kerala Islam has not been able to deliver the result. As an occasional observer of Kerala Islam, I have made some observations which I feel require the intervention of uh, the leadership both at the political and religious front. The first one of course is regarding the scholarship of women, the religious scholarship of the ladies in Kerala Islam. Although both boys and girls are enrolled in Arabic colleges and madrasas in Kerala Islam which are the learning centers of Islamic learning, there is an inherent hesitation to accept uh, female scholars in Kerala Islam. The society which is patriarchal in nature is not able to uh, accept or allow a female voice to rise in the scholarship of Kerala Islam. Now there are so many issues pertaining to specifically to women. However, everyone have to depend on a few set of male scholars to get a reply for their problems. The next point I want to share with you is regarding the museums. Now, Kerala Islam may be a centuries old intellectual heavyweight with tons of cultural and historic data. There is so much of legacy in Kerala Islam, no doubt. However, a passionate student of history cannot find a systematic archive of the artifacts or the manuscripts of Kerala Islam. There is absolutely uh, no uh, systematic and organized setup to uh, explore and to understand if you want to browse through the, the records, the ancient records of Kerala Islam. I am afraid there has been almost zero attempt to archive them and to showcase them for uh, who are uh, interested in studying about the Kerala Islam. And today with the movement of men and women across the globe increasingly, we definitely need museums to showcase the ancient and the medieval history of a society for the people who are interested. And a related topic to this is the biographies of the past great men and women in Kerala Islam. Now there have been of course so many luminaries in Kerala Islam, champions in both spiritual, in worldly uh, sense, in politics, in uh, social service, there have been great men and women. But it is a sad reality that none of their biographies have been preserved in a language which is understandable for the common man. 
the uh, holy persons or so the saintly pe peoples uh, some of the biographies are there, but it is encrypted in folks, folk songs in a way which is never accessible to common man. What we need is simple concise presentation of biographies of the past men and women in Caliphate Islam. This is very important to inspire the present so that uh, the Caliphate Islam, the Muslims there can develop a sense of pride and a belongingness to the roots of their own culture. The next is about art forms. Western Islam has produced Nasheed singers and bands which are very popular around the world which has not been the case with Kalite Islam. Now, Kalite Islam is much much older than the western Islam, but unfortunately due to some barriers of culture or say language, Kalite Islam has not been able to showcase an international artist which belongs to, to this culture. Now, this has to be borne in mind both by the artists and the patterns who pat support them. We definitely need to develop art forms which could be presentable on the international uh, Islamic level. There is also the case of historic tourism. Now, in recent times we see that the Muslims in Kerala are increasingly traveling to uh, other countries of the Islamic civilization like uh, say the Middle East not just the Saudi Arabia, but many other countries in the Middle East like Syria, uh, like Egypt, Palestine and they are also going to Turkey, uh, Persia to explore the past bygone uh, Islamic civilizations. Now, at the same time these people, the leadership, the organizations in Kalite Islam are not making a similar effort to bring them to Kalite Islam in order to showcase the Islam's uh, legacy in Kerala. Now, uh, this is can be done in a very simple way if we find uh, a way to coordinate between the tour operators and these religious organizations, which can lead to big uh, a, a big success story, because uh, there is a lot of uh, ancient history in Kerala related to Islam which would be you know highly interesting to the Muslims outside Kerala. Kerala Islam also has a remarkable uh, legacy of architecture. There is a mosque and so many other buildings which have a unique design, unique pattern in uh, design when compared to the other parts of Islamic world. Now, just like uh, we talked about the, the previous issue, these architectural designs have to be showcase to the international Islamic community. So, uh, uh, an, a unified effort by uh, Muslim architects and religious organizations can definitely help achieve this. While Kerala Islam can boast of lots of religious uh, institutions uh, which the community uh, patronizes as a, uh, the charity and other philanthropic activities, uh, these students hardly pay any fees. But what happens the, after they graduate from these institutions, they hardly look back to the community except a very few of them. So, if we have a research and development wing developed by these religious organizations who run these institutions, we can selectively tap into the potential of these uh, highly uh, uh, skilled uh, graduates, they, they have lots of knowledge and lots of skill uh, talents and th the community can definitely benefit out of them. Lastly, while well, Malayalam remains the most popular language of Kerala Islam, the people who live in predominantly Muslim dominated areas, they send their children to English medium schools and we have a huge generation who are coming up learning this English language. If the religious organizations do not come up, do not uh, accept this reality, if they do not come into terms with this truth, I am afraid the gap between the community and the religious organizations will definitely widen. So, they have to gear up to face this situation, they have to upgrade the clergy 
to fulfill this gap. Now, I believe these fine tunes for the fine arts of Kerala can definitely help improve the situation. It may sound poetic, but the leaders with their intervention can make them pragmatic. Poets think, politicians implement. Jehun.com was my effort to share my intense experiences and interactions with Kerala Islam. It is a storehouse of my interactions with the leaders and also a few of my writings, my travel experiences, what I faced during the travels in Kerala Islam. Additionally, I had also published uh, a book, The Cool Breeze from Hind, which is a, a mystical travelogue uh, about the influence, the Arabian influence on Kerala Islam. I thank the cafe and its team for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts. Thank you.